pain goes to me. Uh, is it okay now? Everybody can join. Waiting another person. Okay. So today, Mr. Rojdan is going to present first. Then this will be followed by Mr. Iron Man. Then we will follow Mr. Nizam and then Mr. Adam. Okay. So, okay. Once again, uh, so today, uh, first lineup is Mr. Rojdan, then Mr. M Irman, then Mr. Nizam. And then Mr. Adam. Okay. 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 So you guys have uh, around 10 to 15 minutes for presentation. And then mm -hmm. we all can ask some question and answers. Okay. I, I can ask also and uh, the students can ask also. Uh, that would be very nice. And then this will be followed by the another presenter who will present the presentation. So, uh, so 10 to 15 minutes for presentation, five minutes for question and answers, and that's it. Uh, that will be all. So, is uh, Mr. Rushtan ready? Ah, yes, ready, sir. Mr. Muhammad Adam, you wanted to speak something? No, oh, okay. Yeah, you guys can check your microphone also. Anything you want to check, you guys can check, no problem. Uh, there is no urgency, no hurries. So please proceed. The floor is yours, Mr. Rushdan. Uh, the floor is yours. <clears throat> okay, sir. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can ah, yes. see your screen very clearly. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, good evening everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Amal Roshdan uh, LF. Okay, for today's uh, advanced manufacturing, uh, surface engineering, uh, today I would like to present about structural and mechanical properties of uh, chromium nickel and singles and gradient layer coating deposit on my stay by the magnetron sputtering. We are lucky today because I think uh, if you have, I have during q and question, if I cannot answer your question, um, maybe um, so, uh, Dr. Muin can answer because this is a uh, paper that um, uh, from Dr. Muin also. And regarding our view of coating process, uh, basically this uh, paper, this is to investigate the mechanical properties of PVD, generally single and gradient layer, uh, communicable and coating deposit on my steel substrate. And for the coating technique, it's physical vapor deposition because there is a various coating technique. And for this uh, paper, the author uh, using coating technique PVD and for the coating process is magnetron sputtering technique. Uh, basically, what is the coating post uh, magnetron sputtering technique. Uh, you can see schematic of magnetron sputtering process here. 
uh, this is how magnetron scooter device typically work. I uh, refer from magnetron scooter in uh, home website. Uh, the argon gas here uh, comes into the system. Below, you have the target uh, label as a cathode and the top here where the substrate is being mounted is the anode. So at the target here, it's a negative power and the argon gas become positive ion. The, the attraction can be mild here or the attraction can be hard depending on how much power and pressure in this particular deposition will take place. Same for this article also. There is also, uh, after that, we, I, will, uh, uh, I will present uh, more about the parameter that are using by author for the uh, parameter. Then, um, once uh, this attraction happened, this material is removed from the target, from the target, and that cause plasma, and that plasma began is being deposited onto the substrate here, onto the substrate which is located directly above the target. Then, this is uh, one of the example I took from the internet. Uh, basically, this is a glass. Uh, you can see the difference between uh, after deposition here and without deposition here. Uh, basically, uh, this class is uh, transparent class with uh, semiconductor. And for the coating parameter, uh, this is a coating parameter that is uh, using by, by auto. The substrates put with uh, pure chromium and nickel 99.99% uh, target bit size uh 102 mm diameter and 3 mm thickness and substrate distance was uh 150 mm main, uh, maintain uh, the gas flow rate and chromium direct current uh basically uh for the chromium direct current dc power source uh is used and for the uh, nickel direct current power source apply and for the nickel radio frequency RF source apply and for the single layer uh, CR uh, in for three hours that means uh, the single layer was deposited by continuous filtering of CR uh, commune nickel and for three hours and for the gradient layer uh, 3.5 uh, hours uh, you can see this table here uh, for the grad gradient layer there is a uh, five different layer in such what uh, way that uh, nick, uh, nickel for uh, 30 minutes and I end up on 15 minutes here yeah. and uh, chromium uh, 30 minutes, chromium nickel for 15 minutes and the for 120 minutes. So this is a parameter uh, based on uh, layer uh, what for the working pressure and also for the base, uh, base pressure. Uh, basically, for the coating material, for the single layer is uh, commonly uh, nickel N and gradient layer Ni, Nin, Cr, Crn and Crnin. And for the for this paper, basically there is uh, um, about five uh, measurement measurement technique. Every second, but for this uh, presentation today, I will select uh, about three three measurement technique. Uh, one is a field emission scanning electron, uh, field emission scanning electron microscopy, prism, surface cross section, B atomic force microscope, observe the topographical texture here, and the C is adhesion strength. Okay, for about regarding uh, prism using uh, surface cross section here, uh, the stable without any. We see, uh, we we uh, we can see uh, clearly that stable without any visible crack or coating peel off, and the interface between coating and substrate is uniform and defect are free, and single layer coating exhibit a smoother surface as compared to the gradient layer, and also single layer surface morphology show mostly regular and and uniform particle, and for the gradient layer show triangular this one triangular particle. And basically, this type of form structure are able to sustain more thermal expression and also stress. And for the coating thickness increase, we increase in of deposition time. Therefore, coating thickness of the gradient layer is greater than that 
of the generally single single layer so uh, compared to the uh, single layer and gradient layer you can see here that for the thickness it's about 1.36 micrometer and for the uh, gradient layer is 6.64 uh, micrometer and uh, second uh, measurement is uh, I was selected is atomic force microscope observes the topo topographical texture. Uh, we are using AFM. Auto using AFM scan was taken over an area 10 micrometer cubic. Uh, nearly no surface defect such as micro craters or cracks were found on the plane surface of the, uh, this uh, optin film. The relation in surface roughness, RA arithmetic means surface roughness. RQ distance between mean line and the highest proper peak and RZ maximum height of the roughness proper as measured by AF and this is a result. Uh, we can see we, uh, from the uh, paper uh, single layer communion layer estimated 27.2% le less for the RA. Uh, average coating surface roughness of the single layer is 48 uh, Newton meter and gradient layer is 66 Newton meter. And uh, the last one that I select uh, for the measurement is addition strength. Uh, this figure identifies crash addition stream of single and gradient coating on my steel. And for the single layer coating, separation uh, occur at a low of 320.29 meter liter over the distance of 446.32 uh, micrometer. And gradient layer uh, coating expression took place at the low of oh, 700. 10.64 uh, newton corresponding to the scratch distance of 332.11 uh, micrometer. And material layer coating having more number of by layer, layer along higher coating, you get uh, higher coating thickness and harness are characters by higher critical addition load when they compare to single layer coating. And for the conclusion, uh, this, uh, because of I decided three three uh, measurements. So for the conclusion, basically have five, but I select three. Uh, the correct one is characterization, characterization through uh, PSM and it uh, indicate the formation of one point three six and six point six four newton meter defect free thin film of single uh, communicator and and gradient nickel and uh, layer and number two the average coating surface roughness RA of single and gradient layer communicator and observed was found to be 48 and 66 newton meter uh, respectively and the last one the film uh, to subtract addition strength for gradient layer was higher than single layer coating which critical addition failure look value uh, of 710.64 Newton and, and 320.29 uh, Newton meter, uh, meter, meter, meter uh, respectively. I think that's all. Uh, thank you. Okay, Mr. Rajdan, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so guys, uh, your classmates, do you have any question? Anybody? Uh, I will go first. No, the... Okay, Rushdan, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, it seemed to be like a very, very new to me for all these things. Uh, my question it will, it will be related to the uh, various coating technique. Uh, other than this magnetron, uh, what I call it, uh, sputtering, do you know any? How many various coating techniques? How okay. many of them do you know? Okay, uh, basically, uh, there is uh, more various coating technique. Uh, and uh, like uh, physical vapor deposition, uh, chemical vapor deposition, uh, soil gel, uh, precision steel processing, and thermal spraying, and, uh, and others. But uh, for this uh, paper, I'll select 
the physical vapor deposition because of uh, there is some advantages uh, they they select here because of uh, they they in term of uh, thermal shock and also material along with excellent surface finish uh, they and also I think for the coating integrity if I know second uh, they 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 choose for uh, PVD uh, uh, physical vapor deposition uh, for the coating technique. Okay, okay, Mr. Iman. Okay, all right. Okay, that's that's new to me. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Any other question? Then I will ask. Okay. Uh, uh, so you said that there is relationship between thickness and adhesion strength, right? Ah, yes. Uh, yes. Is there any relationship between surface roughness and adhesion strength? Ah, uh, yes. Sir. Uh, for the surface thickness, uh, if you look at here, uh, the uh, single layer is uh, for the thickness is 1.36 and for the gradient layer uh, 6.64. Uh, Again, the, the, the uh, so, so, so what is the relationship between the roughness, surface roughness, okay. and the, the adhesion strength? You can check the conclusion by people. Okay. Yeah, um, for the surface thickness. Sorry, roughness. Roughness. Okay. Uh, for the average cutting surface roughness, uh, yeah. for the single gradient layer, uh, found to be forty eight, and for the gradient layer is sixty six. Uh, single layer show uh less friction coefficient value, but compared to gradient, and. In the other hand, uh, beside that, the film to subject addition strength also uh, for the single layer coating, uh, it's about 710. Uh, higher value of the space roughness, hardness, thickness, and friction uh, addition for the gradient layer. That means uh, for the gradient layer, uh, uh, addition uh, thickness is uh, more than a uh, single layer. Sir. So basically, if we deposit thick coatings, then maybe it, it, perhaps, uh, perhaps the adhesion strength is also. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so uh, respectively, uh, have uh, uh, if we get more uh, coating, so for the addition. Uh, uh value also value also uh, uh value also high right, correct. and uh, uh, sorry sorry uh, surface roughness is less because we deposited less amount of coating ah uh, yes so, yes. so so in your conclusion what do you think uh, is there a specific application or separate application for single layer and gradient layer, or we should prefer gradient layer. Okay, uh, basically, uh, for the uh, single layer, uh, single layer application, uh, mostly uh, used for the cutting tools and also biomedical implant uh, because of corrosion resistant. Uh, but uh, for the multi layer, because of uh, uh, have a more uh, a higher addition load, so uh, we can consider that uh, the layer is um, is a more benefit. I think more more uh, application can be can be used for the gradient layer. So thank you, Mr. Rashidan. I hope you had a good time reading the paper. <laughs> and uh, maybe you are interested in coatings also later on in your life. 
because maybe somebody is in the kit too so perhaps this can be a different uh, insight for the person who are working in such uh, such industries but okay. even for petrochemical industries they do coating on the inner lining of valves and Ah, uh, basically in in my place also do the coating, but uh, mostly the coating is uh do like a rubber 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 coating yes. inside the inhaler yes. pump for the pump. Correct, correct. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Vishnu. Okay, uh, okay. I hope you could learn something. Wish okay, you good luck. So we will move on to the next presenter, Mr. Irman. Welcome you to the screen. Okay, Rotan, thank you very much. Mute myself now. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, all right. Uh, everybody can hear me, right? Correct, correct. Okay, that's great. Okay, good evening, uh, Dr. Moin and my fellow colleagues. Okay, this evening I will be presenting uh, uh, the general paper. is regarding investigation of the mechanical properties of electro deposit nickel and magnetron spotted chromium nitrate coating deposit on the mild steel substrate. Okay, this paper is being produced by the our respected Dr. Moin and then Dr. Jahan Zeb, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Fazal, Dr. Abdul Fahim Khan, and Dr. Bushroa Abdul Razak. Okay, without further ado, I will proceed. The presentation will be divided into five sections. The first section will be a brief overview of the coating process. The second one, coating parameters for electro deposition, and then the coating material for the electro deposition, uh, and also for the magnetron, and then the surface characterization and measurement technique, and then conclusion. Okay, for uh, for number one is a brief overview of the coating process. Okay, since this paper. Uh, it's a combination of the electro deposition technique and also the magnetron sputtering technique. So I have to explain both of them. So the first technique, uh, we're using the sulfate water bath where the nickel coating deposit on the mild steel substrate. Okay, they will using the uh, electro deposition technique uh, to create the coating for only for the nickel. And then the uh, one finish with that one, and then the the substrate will be moved to the magnetron sputtering technique, and then the where the chromium coating will be de deposited by using the DC power 350 watt system, and then the nit at the same time the nitrogen gas in will be induced for the formation of the nitrate phases, and then the. Regarding the electro deposition techniques, I will explain here what happened. It will be the in the nickel sulfate water bath using platinum mesh as an anode. The solution pH maintained will be uh, maintained at 3.5, is a plus minus 0 0.1. The solution temperature at 57 degree. Uh, solution is uh, aggregated, aggregate, agitated at the constant speed of the 80 rpm and then a uh, current density is about 75 plus minus 1 milliamp is used and then the, the whole process will be take around one hour and then the coating material for the electro deposition stage will be uh, nickel sulfate nickel chloride and boric acid okay for the second process, it, which is a uh, magnetron sputtering, it's uh, they use uh, using the system of the 350 watt DC power. The position chamber evacuated to the base pressure 
3 times 10 pipe top before deposition. Substrate temperature kept at the 250 degrees C. Target distance 15 centimeter. And the pure argon is uh, applied, used as a sputtering gas. And then the nitrogen used for the formation for the chromium nitrate phase. And then uh, all the detail is here. And then the whole process for the magneton sputtering is, uh, is two hours. So the the coating material involved with this uh, magnetron sputtering process, the second, which is the second process, is a uh, chromium, and then the uh, ninety-nine point nine nine percent purity, and then the nitrogen used for the formation for the chromium nitrate phase. Okay, uh, all the all the sample, all the result is a. Uh, is a measure the will be measured by the by the journal they mentioned here they have a uh, six techniques of it so the first one will be sem scanning electron microscope microscopy micrograph where the where this one is a surface morphology and composition of the coating were examined through the scanning electron microscopy equipped with the, the machine name is uh, i think fe stroke sem that uh, FEG quanta FEG two five zero. Okay. Uh, in this in this technique, the morphology is a uh, analyze of form of shape and the structure of the coating. And then the ones the second method will be EDX is a uh, energy dispersive X ray elemental analysis uh, where in this in this anal uh, in this technique there's a uh, analyze uh, chemical proposition and then where the surface morphology and composition of the coating were examined through the scanning electron microscopy equipped with the same machine as a uh, sem so the third one is a uh, xrd is a x-ray diffraction pattern analyzed by using the panalytical X-ray, and then uh, in this process is uh, analyze the crystal crystallographic structure of material. Basically, is uh, to measure the crystal over there, and then how is process being done is uh, irradiating a material with the X-ray and measuring the in intensities and scattering angle of the X-ray that leave the material. Okay, and then the the fourth technique measurement technique uh, using the micro hard micro hardness by by measurement equipment uh my hmv micro hardness tester and then the material material hardness will they in this process they will check the material hardness or resistant to penetration they will using the indenter press into the surface up to set load the certain load where the dwell of set time of period in the certain time of the period and then the fifth one is a micro scratch adhesion strength and then uh, I believe this one is a scratch, scratch test under constant normal load and produce series of the scratch for the determining critical load okay uh, for the number six will be the surface roughness measure through the to the roughness tester mitu mit mitu toyo at the speed of the 0 0.5 millimeter per second over the tracing distance two millimeter okay uh in this process the small st stylus is drawn across the surface uh at the constant speed for the set distance and then the electrical signal is obtained and amplified to produce a much enlarged vertical um, magnif magnification Okay, so I will proceed to the. I will I will choose three as a uh, whatever uh, what the required is. Uh, the first one will be SEM micrograph. As we can see here in the in this picture, the 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 figure A, the nickel electroplated show because the uh, the they, we divide into A and B because A is a process with the. Electro, deposi electro deposition and then the 
the B1 is a magnetron sp sputtering. Okay, sorry. Okay, the, uh, in A, it's a nickel electroplated show irregular agglom agglomerated and non-uniform distribution of particle. And then the, in the figure B, with the magnetron sputtering, the nickel chromium nitrate coating exhibits spherical nodular randomly distributed particle of irregular size with almost repetitive pattern across the surface. And then from here, we can see the coating deposit found stable by the electro deposition and magnet magnetron sputtering on the mild steel substrate. No peel or crack have been observed in the coating. Furthermore, both coating are dense, compact, and and free crack and from free from crack and the pinhole. Electroplated nickel coating seem to be denser and uh, denser and compact in comparison with the nickel chromium nitrate coating due to the faster deposition rate of the electro deposition which will be the the first process only take uh, one hour the second process is take two hours okay uh, the second one uh, is the edx elemental analysis in this uh, in this process again the first one is a and then the second one is b the first process uh, electro deposition second one magneton sputtering we can see here in the figure A, it is clear that the nickel has been successfully deposited by the electro deposition technique with a high purity. And then the B, the, the chromium has been detected in the major amount along with the, with the nitrate, which reflect the formation of the chromium nitrate in the bilayer in the nickel chromium nitrate coating. Okay, uh, the only thing in this process, uh, it's been introduced the con uh, carbon conducting tape. Uh, and then uh, you can see here some of the effect from the carbon carbon conducting tape. The analysis of the Bose coating uh, was performed using carbon conducting tape to avoid charging, but uh, it does affect the presence of the carbon, oxygen, and ferrous uh, in the uh, in the result okay the the third one one i explain it, i want to explain is a surface roughness it's a surface roughness of the nickel nickel electro deposit and the nickel chromium nitrate sputtering uh, pvd coating will be nearly the same the roughness for both coating if form is almost similar only small different you can see here 1.16 and then the other one is the 1.17. Okay. The conclusion of, from this one, I, the one I make me most interested is uh, nickel and the nickel chromium nitrate bilayer coating has been effectively formed. Hello? Is it my internet? Probably internet, Hello? daughter. I also can't hear. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Irman's uh, internet, right? From together. <laughs> we wait, we wait uh, two, three minutes. That's great.
Oh, I'm I'm very very sorry. I think I lost the internet signal because of the raining. Ah, the tumu in mute. I also I cannot hear doctor. Ada tumu in mute maybe. You mute your mic. No, yeah, sorry. 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 Ah. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I think I lost my internet connection because of the raining. Uh, I can redo again the presentation if you want. Eh? Uh, no, I think conclusion is done already. So yeah. I will just go for question answer session. Is is it okay for you if you can open your camera for uh, just the question answer session, so that uh, I just can record that you guys were present during the presentation for uh, uh, procedure purpose. Yeah, sure, sure. No problem. So the question is, uh, which uh, uh, coating will you prefer, uh, the electro deposited or nickel uh, or the PVD deposited uh, hybrid coating? Uh, from me, the, because the result is nearly the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can I cannot really uh, justify which one is a good one, okay, uh, okay. but with the combination of this one and then it seems to be like a more stable. Nice. Of course, I, I of course by the uh, hold on uh, <clears throat> by the SE, uh, by the anal uh, analysis by the SEM and then uh, ADX Elemental. It seem to mm -hmm. be like uh, the magnetron sputtering. It seem to be like a more, more stable, and everything. The composition is more, more much nicer. I'm not really sure what's the words to say this one. Can you uh, see, uh, the hardness is more for uh, one of them. Can you see the hardness? Just the figure. Have a look. Uh, is is there any hardness figure inside the paper? Ah yes, the hard, okay from the from the hardness itself, uh, I can see the by using the by using the what they call magneton magnetron sputtering, the hard the hardness is much much higher. It's a it seem to be much much better. But with the another all the other analysis uh, analysis is nearly the same result. So there is no point of doing uh, another uh, you know coating. If okay. we don't want hardness and we want just the structure and you know nickel coating only, then there is no point of uh, doing this thing because it has not changed much. Uh, the uh, oh yeah, yeah, I agree with that one. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for that information. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. What do you think is you said agglom agglomeration? Do you yeah. know what the agglomeration? I tried to Google it. It's uh, it's quite hard for me to understand that this uh, fancy <laughs> word. <laughs> It's like uh, if many mo molecules are together, let's okay. say I have nickel, I'm depositing nickel and I'm depositing chromium. Okay. Then I want nickel and chromium to be evenly distributed. Evenly. Oh. Right? But if nickel tries to combine with all the nickel in one place, okay, mm. and chromium is left over, then this combination of nickel or the affinity of nickel towards each other in the whole coating is called uh, agglom agglomeration agglomeration okay all right that's great <laughs> at least at least you explained to me uh, no, I, got... uh, anybody <laughs> I just thought it. Okay. okay so thank you it was nice uh, meeting you mr Ramad, and i hope yeah, yeah. Uh, you had a good time yeah and, yeah same uh, thing wishing you the best in your future as well yes yeah, because uh just one thing because before we start and then before i forget it's uh actually this nickel chromium thing uh is quite famous in my industry the application uh -huh. uh, so okay. the, the thing is is uh maybe after during i'm start working i will start to text you to ask because uh normally in for me is uh mm -hmm. i only heard about the nickel chromium only the combination of yeah. these two i never heard yeah. about the nit nitrate when no, we nitrate. when when you induce the nitrogen and everything for nitriding, it's a uh, is uh, seem to be much much better the composition layer, and then uh, 
it will be very very much interesting with this journal to be honest okay thank you very right. much doctor right. it's good that you have some interest in this uh, surface mm. engineering yeah. Yeah, in mm. thank you thank mr roshita can you open your camera just for a few seconds uh, because uh, uh, i just wanted to record you also just for the procedure purpose only uh, that's it okay Nice to see you. Very good looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you. And now we will move on to the uh, Nizam, Mr. Nizam. Okay. I think good for you guys. You can switch your camera if you want. Switch on. Okay. okay. Okay, doctor. I'm going to share. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> can uh, Can you look at my uh, PowerPoint? Yes, yes, we can hear you clearly and look at the PowerPoint as well. Yeah, yeah, we can oh, see you. Yes. Okay. Assalamu alaikum and very good uh, evening to doctor and all the all my fellow friends. Uh, so for today, uh, I'm going to uh, explain, I'm going to present about the surface texture, manufacturing techniques and tribological effect of surface texturing on cutting tool performance. <clears throat> so first first of all, it is the briefing briefing of the overview of the texture process, which is uh, by during the last few decades operate, operating condition of mechanical contacts have become very intense and consequently uh, the film thickness has approached uh, the dimension of surface roughness. Um, <clears throat> the main point is uh, by controlling the friction and wear can reduce the consumption, uh, for example, the fuel and increase the lifetime of mechanical uh, components. Uh, another thing is uh, mechanical contact also has been very intensi intensively uh, approached by right, uh, the thickness of the film influence the dimension of the surface roughness. Uh, my third point is uh, by varying the surface micro topography, hence the surface texturing is one of the uh, tribology uh, characteristic for mechanical components, uh, which is uh, will be uh, improvised by acting as a reservoir for the uh, lubricant, uh, the wet debris and action as hydro hydrodynamic uh, bearing. This is, um, I think uh, this is a uh, lot of techniques are uh, used and has its own uh, benefit and drawback to take into account uh, the flexibility, the accuracy, the cost, cost of texture fabrication and the speed of processing. <coughs> so uh, for the, for this, uh, Rather than the texture process, uh, the same goes to the method of coating such as uh, we use the DLC, which is a diamond uh, light carbon, uh, which is a coating and nano composite has been designed uh, to increase the tool life and reduce friction and wear. However, this coating technique can only increase the tool life uh, and cutting performance up to the certain limit time. Uh, does the new technique uh, need to be developed so that the new techniques is, uh, is going to be developed rather than the coating is by texturing process. So uh, in order to reduce uh, the friction and wear, cutting fluid are often used during the machining process, uh, which is a uh, two main uh, commonly the, uh, the conventional uh, cutting fluid were used uh, such as the lubricated lubrication and coolant. However, uh, this uh, cutting fluid uh, only work better at low, low speed instead at normal speed in turning and milling operation. So that due to this making to, to, to uh, sorry, to make uh, better cooling 
external cooling had been used. Uh, so they used the external water jet and liquid nitrogen. But uh, however, all this kind of cooling just only focus on removing the heat generated at surface rather than re rather than uh, reducing what we call the, the the friction which generated by heat so um, the solution here is uh, in order which uh, we use the to reduce the friction uh, so that they are develop a kind of new techniques such as creating a texture on the two surface uh, so to reduce the friction surface uh, the surface texturing increase the roughness of surface and finally improve the tribology of performance at the contact so uh, sorry uh, yes are you changing the slides also or no uh, no now now i'm going to change okay okay, okay. i thought the slides not change <laughs> but uh, i think i just changed my slide but it's not working it's not working okay i'm going i do i do it again uh, now we change ah uh, okay okay now we'll change okay okay right so this is one of the techniques uh, which is used uh, for this um texturing method uh, which is used the ultrasonic machining i use the ultrasonic machining which is the cnc usm so the working principle of this cutting techniques is the cutting is actually uh, which is uh, performed uh, by the abrasive uh, particle which are suspended in the slurry okay uh, the slurry is which is the i think my my point mouse pawn is cannot be third, cannot be move uh, can cannot moving yeah it is uh, it is not moving yeah not moving but Maybe you can uh, stop sharing and rest re restart sharing. Okay. okay, I try to restart. Okay. Okay. Now it's better. Much more better. Okay, doctor. Uh, I'm going to continue. So this is a uh, uh, ultrasonic machine, which is the working principle. It uses a cutting, uh, which is actually performed by the abrasive particle, which are suspended uh, in the slurry. Yeah. So in the slurry, slurry by means the H2O, which is water plus the, or we call it as a fluid plus with the abrasive material. So the abrasive material is consists of the boron uh, carbide and also sometimes they use the silicon carbide B4C and SIC so that uh, the USM is complete the material removal uh, through the abrading the abrading action of the grid loaded uh, slurry uh, sorry the which is a cap which is keeping the circulated between the tools and the workpiece so the frequency so now uh, sorry um, so uh, by using this so that the slurry will go to the to the entire of the uh, workpiece uh, between the tools and the workpiece we are going to be interface interface of this we have the slurry so that the slurry itself will going to grind the workpiece uh, to be uh, and the design the shape will going to uh, the tool shape will make the dimension the dimens the uh, dimensional of this workpiece we're going to uh, copy the tools uh, shape this is uh, the usm method so um so this is how does it looks like uh, it has a palm we have a pump here. Oh, sorry, it's, it's not moving. Why it's happened? This cannot move. I just moved the slide, but. And now 
Now it is on parameters. Yeah, now it is working. Okay. Okay. So the parameters. Sorry, doctor, for this inconvenient matters. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's a technical issue. <coughs> okay. No so uh, we have a parameters here, which is uh, it consists of this uh, 25 mm, uh, the linear uh, material removal rate about 25 millimeter per minute. So that the surface finish is about negative 0 0.25 micron to 0 0.75 micron. And uh, non-directional uh, surface that texture is possibly possible uh, compared to conventional grind grinding. The radial over the cut may be as low as 1.5 to 4 times that mean the mean of the abrasive grain size. So the operates in the range of 200 to 4000 uh, watt and 10 to 40 kilohertz uh, <coughs> by right it just the frequency uh, usually we're going to have the about 20 20 kilohertz for the high frequency vibration but the range is about 10 to 40 so most common frequency is yes the most uh, frequency is 20 kilohertz beyond audible range <coughs> which is uh, which can be tuned to plus minus 10 percent to give more optimum uh, condition for specific tool or the uh, workpiece combination. So with, within a, uh, within these techniques, so that the hard abrasion particle in the slurry are accelerate, accelerated towards the workpiece uh, surface by oscillating action of the tools through the repeated impact. Okay, so that. Um, So uh, sometimes this uh, ultrasonic machining, uh, it cannot be uh, used uh, to, uh, sorry, uh, this. so the, uh, this uh, USM, uh, sorry, doctor. the disadvantage of the USM is, uh, is can be uh, build, out, build out the erosion due to the cavitation effect of the abrasive slurry erosion of the workpiece uh, surface will, will also be occur. But uh, another drawback is the uh, this, uh, this uh, techniques is unable to texture hard material because of the micro drill uh, will going to be failure. Okay, expensive and uh, very complex five axis uh, CNC control system which is are required to start steering the complex 3D surfaces. So, um, by right, uh, we, we go to the next slide, which is the texture material. The texture material, uh, which is we have here, is the uh, the turning for the cemented carbide, uh, which is, sorry, the cutting speed is about 60 to 600 uh, 600 uh, meter per minute, which is have a depth depth of cut is about 0 0.2 millimeter, which is uh, this is the um, we call it as a uh, flank face, okay. And uh, the feed rate is about 0 0.1 millimeter 0 0.1 millimeter per revolution. The lubrication method is MQF. So the investigation is uh, about to cutting the performance of the nano and micro texture tool. As uh, I mentioned uh, just now, this is uh, used uh, for texturing. Uh, this is the micro uh, and nano, uh, which is a texture tools investigated with various uh, technique design, texture direction, uh, fit force, cutting force, and shear angle were, were compared. So this, <coughs> the major findings here is the less adherence of aluminium uh, chip material. So this is uh, quite good because uh, it less adherence of aluminium chip so it's also lower cutting forces due to reduced friction at the contact. So here, um, by having the cutting force lower lower down, so that it will go also to reduce the, the, the friction at the contact, okay? So an another um, uh, material is using is a tungsten uh, carbide, which is, um, we have the cutting speed about 120 uh, meter per minute, uh, depth of cuts is about 1 mm, the feed rate is 0 0.3 millimeter revolution per revolution. The lubricant uh, condition is dry and wet. 
So the final element analysis was used to analyze the mechanical strength. So this is the investigated yeah, by using the FEA. Uh, cutting force and friction coefficient were also investigated. So the, the major findings here is uh, it's also reduction in friction coefficient as texture provide lubricant at the interface. So that uh, this is one of the uh, what we call the solid lubricant feel this is a solid lubricant feel which is we use the tungsten carbide uh, to stand to handhold the the the, the friction uh, sorry to lower down the friction uh, at the same time we also handhold the the lubricant uh, reduction in cutting force and cutting uh, energy reduction of large amount of lubricant required in cutting surface texture provide minimum uh, lubricant next we'll go to the next slide uh, this is the uh, the cement carbide, which is a stack, uh, the the steel. Uh, also, also have the cutting speed about 60 to 120 uh, meter per minute. Depth of cut is 0 0.2 uh, millimeter. The fit rate is 0 0.1 millimeter per revolution. Uh, the the lubrica lubrication condition is the solid lubricant, which is the solid lubricant uh, we use as a texture for the cutting tools. Uh, next, uh, we're going to see uh, what, what is the solid lubricant. Investigation of the cutting performance of uh, MOS, which is the, uh, sorry, the molybdenum sulfide, disulfide, which is fill, filling up the rig phase texture tool. So the major findings here is the solid lubricant fill the rig phase texture tool, sh uh, showing that the lowest uh, friction of coefficient compared to the flank face textured and untextured uh, tools. <clears throat> so the cutting uh, force reduced by the use of solid lubricant field texture tools compared to untextured tools. Another one is we use, using the, the uh, cemented carbide, which is the cutting uh, speed 60 to 180 meter per minute. Depth of cut is 0 0.2 millimeter. Feed rate is 0 0.05 to 0 0.3 millimeter per revolution. Uh, the lubrication condition is also the solid, uh, liquid, solid uh, liquid lubricant. But we use the uh, the different material. Investigation investigation of cutting performance of uh, molybdenum disulfide is a uh, fill. We fill the rig and flank face textured tool with different uh, geometrical uh, texturing parameters. So the major finding here is um, we lower, lower down the cutting force and cutting temperature was obtained with textured, textured rig face compared to untextured tool. So the tool life enhanced was observed with a rig and flank textured tool on the next page. So, uh, so I used three of any the kind of the, um, the method which is uh, used the SEM which is uh, electron uh, microscopy. So uh, here we have the um, the image of the main cutting edge. This is the main cutting edge, edge of for the cutting tools, which is uh, the cutting tool with sine wave texture. So this is the sine wave texture. Uh, <coughs> the reason for the superior performance of the of this uh, sine wave texture is uh, sorry. <coughs> uh, the, uh, uh, by means uh, reduction of friction coefficient has also been found using this uh, this uh, cutting tools with sine wave texture uh, rather than uh, it has un untextured untextured uh, surface so that uh, this is the 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 it looks like and then, uh, so this is the cutting tool with banded nano micro, um, nano micro uh, texture. So the nano micro texture. Uh, this uh, this is the reason uh, why I use the uh, this uh, micro structure. Uh, sorry, the banded nano micro structure because of what? Because uh, the banded groove. Okay, the banded groove. Uh, it is uh, much more better rather than the band, uh, sorry, much more better rather than the sine wave because of the cemented texture and the, and that's, and the tool is, uh, sorry, 
that they retain and provide lubricant at the interface uh, keeping the lubricant uh, leakage to a minimum okay for this reason the micro the micro texture uh, but this is have the disadvantage because did not did not uh, it has no uh, showing the improvement in anti addition anti addition and coefficient of friction so the important things is of storing of providing the lubricant ability has also uh, been found in a dry cutting of aluminium actually so the aluminium uh, so uh, this is uh, it's not quite good rather than the uh, this nano micro texture is quite good rather than the uh, rather than the sorry the wave the wave uh, texture so uh, another method which is used for this uh, texture is uh, by having the various the variation of the shape <coughs> so the, the the shape is uh, it has a lot of shape uh, uh, design in order to reduce the friction and compare to uh, to the untextured tools uh, su uh, uh, such as the pit shape which is a uh, we have a dimension here width and depth a uh, various uh, width and depth here and the pit type that still reduce friction and normal force compared to untextured uh, tool but reduction was less compared to a parallel this is because a uh, as parallel groove uh, to the cutting edge can reduce contact at the area they can they also can retain cutting fluid uh, okay so that the micro hole texture uh, tool also uh, showing that the lowest friction coefficient uh, wear and cutting force compared to untextured uh, tool so for the pit shape is uh, which it, which is also reduce the friction compared to untextured tools however it had it was uh, higher than linear groove in both parallel and perpendic perpendicular uh, direction uh, to the cutting edge. Reduced wear uh, can be observed by uh, dimple texture compared to a linear groove. So uh, the dot type texture reduce uh, friction and normal force compared to untextured uh, tools but were less effective uh, than the pit uh, then the pit uh, type texture this may be cause of the low of oil retention ability of uh, of a dot uh, type texture compared to pit type texture so the the dot uh, shape uh, the, the sorry the pit shape uh, texture can retain retain uh, retention the ability of the loop oil rather than the dot shape Another, another shape is a banded groove which is improvement in an anti-addition property of tools with banded groove in aluminium cutting was found uh, compared to sine wave shape and cross pattern textured tools due to oil retention ability and reduced contact area <coughs> another one is the uh, pyramid shape a groove which is quickly worn out uh, as the tool strength was weakened due to the texture so sometimes uh, it also have the the two strength also can be uh, weakened be, uh, due to the texture it's a lot of texture at the we call it as a rake face uh, sorry at the at the main cutting edge at the rake face and also the flank face so this is the elliptical shape texture showed showed the lowest uh, uh, coefficient of friction cutting forces and cutting temperature compared to linear groove and untextured tools uh, by means uh, the improvement in tool life also can redu reduction in cutting uh, force and cutting texture was observed with elliptical texture compared to an untextured uh, tools so this is uh, where uh, on uh, sorry to interrupt Mr. Nizal can you go to the uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I drag lots of time. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so the conclusion is uh, the surface texture can increase the cutting performance of tool by uh, reducing by reducing the friction force, crater wear, uh, the flank wear, the cutting force, and the increase of the shear angle. 
so these surface textures also can be beneficial in both wet and dry uh, cutting condition. In wet condition, uh, they store and provide cutting fluid at the cutting point. Also trap the wet debris, debris and uh, reduce the contact area of the tool and chip uh, interface. In dry condition, they uh, reduce the contact area uh, between the tool and chip and also trap the well debris. My third point is a solid lubricant field texture tool provide higher performance in dry machining, thus avoiding uh, the disadvantage of using the cutting fluids. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you for your presentation. I think you Sorry. selected the uh, most uh, heavy paper with a lot of information. Uh, can you open yes. your webcam and ask one question and answer from there? If you don't mind. Pardon, doctor. I uh, can you open the webcam if for only one minute? Oh, okay, 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 can. Okay, okay, I'll wait. Okay, doctor. So, uh, your anybody has any question with uh, Mr. Nizam? Uh, Mr. Nizam, uh, could you please uh, open your first slide? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, first slide. First slide. You mean you mean this or this? Uh, the first slide. First slide. Your 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 opening slide. My opening slide. Okay. Yes. What you were going to do, uh, uh, Mr. Adam? <laughs> I, I, I have one question. Uh, okay. As, as, your, as your conclusion said that uh, the, uh, the, the surface texture manufacturing uh, uh, product itself has uh, improved the typological effects uh, and, uh, and, and it's good for cutting tools pr uh, performance. Uh, my question is, uh, 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 instead of uh, cutting tools performance, uh, where uh, any 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 location uh, that we can apply uh, the surface texture manufacturing product set where we can use it uh, instead of uh, apart from uh, cutting to perform uh, cutting to okay uh, okay uh, actually we uh, this uh, texture and coating actually for coating it also can be applied to the cylinder liner to the for the surface of the finishing surface of the coating process such as we put the diamond like carbon for the such as the mechanical seal for the surface uh, fin finishing because the we, we know that the mechanical seal uh, in the pump application we used to to seal the water or seal the liquid from leaking so that it is uh, use the diamond like cover okay for the we call it as uh, for the coating so that uh, it can be uh, grinding it can be uh, make some fine finishing on that particular uh, surface or the cylinder or the cylinder liner so in the line also we need to have a fine finishing as the piston moving reciprocating inside the inside the uh, the, the internal combustion engine okay mr adam is it okay thank you very much thank you very much so, Mr. Neza, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. You you choose why you choose this uh, paper? Uh, because uh, one thing is uh, I never I never never uh, heard about the solid lubricant. Okay. Uh, because I all I uh, commonly we are using the wet lubricants such as the cooling cooling water uh, fluid coolings or the coolant or the oil as a lubricant but this is a solid lubricant i really really uh, not familiar with these uh, topics so that i choose and i try to 
come out with my humble presentation <laughs> sorry for the uh, yes you are working in which industry oh uh, i'm uh, in the marine industry marine engineering yes uh, yeah, so this is uh, this topic uh, which you have discussed has a huge, uh, broad, very broad applications actually. Um, so basically what we do is sometimes before coating we do surface texturing and sometimes after the coating process we do surface texturing also. Both are done commonly. And uh, yeah, it has uh, completely changed the tribological performance of those surfaces which were not textured previously. So in in the upcoming years, uh, all of you guys will start seeing already very small micro dimples uh, on some surfaces, uh, which are to be used for tribological applications. So, um, Mr. Nizam, you mentioned about diamond-like coating. coating. So, uh, so what did you learn about diamond-like coating in this paper? What what is it is mentioned? why it is used uh actually yes. the diamond yes the diamond diamond uh, like coating or diamond like carbon uh, am i mistake am i <laughs> sorry the diamond like carbon is uh one of these uh, the coating surface which is used as a finishing as a as a fine as a fine finishing uh, so that uh, used for the uh, for the sealing purposes and also the fine finishing for the fine surface such as the look such as the cylindrical liner the the surface of this uh, uh, interconnect inter surface of the metal to metal contacts okay uh, and what about the solid duplicates uh, uh, can you name something more? Any other soil lubricants? There is one is graphite. Any other examples? Okay, solid lubricant. So as as I uh, read the article, the solid lubricant uh, it consists of uh, it consists of the in term in term of the tool uh, cutting tools. Uh, it use uh, it makes some shape, makes some shape, and also it makes some. Um, we call it as a, as a we call it as a lubricant, uh, as a l solid lubricant, which is used to uh, reduce the coefficient of friction uh, by very by varying the 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 shape and also the we call it as a orientation. Uh, the orientation of the cutting tools by having the perpendicular of the parallel uh, to the cutting tools by mean the 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 the, the shape of this solid lubricant uh, it has a different it has a different uh, method uh, sorry it has a different uh, advantage by having the perpendicular or the parallel to the uh, the shape uh, I mean, the shape is going to be oriented orientation. Yeah, uh, how? How? Uh, yes, yes. Because they yes. have uh, the alignment, the molecular alignment is such that uh, the molecules are strong in one direction, but they are weak in another direction. So these are two uh, two planes. So they will easily, slowly, and easily they, they can deform in this direction. So uh, yes, 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 sir. Are good yes. in one direction and weak in another. Okay. Yes, okay, sir. Thank you, Mr. Deva, for your okay. presentation. Uh, thank you. you very well. And you selected the most difficult paper. So I give credit okay. to you that it, was, it is a review paper, actually. This is not a technical paper, it is a review paper. And review paper consists of 100 papers which are combined. So that is why there was so much information. Yeah. Never mind, you had a very nice experience. And whenever you want to study some field of research, the first thing we should see is the review paper. If we look at review paper, then it will give you all the information that should that is available and what you should do in future right, as well. It will give you some idea. Anyway, right. so okay, doctor, doctor. 
Okay, yeah, thank you, Doctor. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the for the any uh, wrong. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Adam, you can proceed. Uh, Doctor, can you see? Um, no, because Mr. Nizam has not, uh, he has not removed, but let me remove the presentation. Can you see, Doctor, my slide? Uh, not yet. Okay. Now? Uh, no, not yet also. Actually, it's okay. I, I take your time. Yeah, yeah, take your time. You will figure out. Don't worry. And I, I, I never use uh, Google Meet actually. Oh, so you're using I, I never thing. use any of the online online platform. <laughs> oh, very lucky. Very lucky. So, so how are the two two years pandemic and never use? Very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have to select uh, present now. Can you uh, let no. me present you? Let me show you how to select. So I'll present okay. my friends again. Okay, let's okay. see the screen now. So you can go yeah. here. This is a button. You have okay. to present. Once you press uh, this, then it will ask you present whole screen. So you can present your whole screen also. Or okay. only the time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. I beg to our uh, respected, most respected lecturer, Dr. Moin, and uh, my fellow colleagues. Uh, today, Waalaikum salam. Today, I will be going to present an article uh, entitled uh, Experimental Investigation of Three Biological Properties of Laser Textured Tungsten Dope Diamond Light Carbon Under Dry Sliding Condition at Various Load. So, a, a brief overview of laser uh, surface texturing. Uh, level, uh, laser surface texturing is used to alter surface uh, morphology, topo topography, wettability, and chemistry of material surfaces. Uh, the morphology is an analytical image which is an advanced form of high special resolution image imaging that uses a sophisticated microscope uh, to produce uh, images of sample product, sample or product that cannot be seen by naked eyes. For example, like uh, SEM or optical, uh, optical uh, microscope. And then uh, the to surface uh, topo topography is a profile shape and uh, surface roughness. Uh, wettability is the ability of a liquid to maintain contact with uh, solid uh, surface because some of the uh, some of the material that has been uh, undergo uh, laser surface texturing. Uh, uh, some it tends to hydrophobic and then some they tends to hydrophilic. <coughs> so <coughs> there are several patterns which are uh, which are micro micro groove, uh, micro dimples and nano textures uh, pattern. As you can see here at the uh, your right your right side, this is a picture of a sample for the dimples pattern and also groove pattern. Uh, laser uh, next is a laser micro -saturing. so laser micro has been used uh, to reduce primarily to reduce uh, friction and wear at me mechanical surfaces it has been uh, widely used uh, at the tool, uh, the tool for, uh, to increase to increase the tool performance and also 
at the automotive uh, parts. So uh, the product has been under that has been undergone uh, laser micro saturing uh, behave as a micro hydrophobic micro hydrodynamic uh, bearing. Uh, the function is to trap the wear debris uh, in order to reduce the uh, the wear at the surface. Uh, this uh, laser micro saturing can be created by lasers, uh, for example, like by using vibro uh, mechanical texturing. A micro EDM, a chemical itching, uh, and also um, micro grinding, and etc. Uh, this is our, this is our, this is the example picture uh, of the dimples uh, texture uh, on a metallic substrate, for example, like uh, aluminium, copper, nickel, and I uh, and ISI four three zero. The next is. Uh, metal uh, metal coated diamond like carbon. Uh, various coating has been used to lower uh, wear and tear of component. Uh, diamond like carbon uh, has been coated with metal to further enhance service life of component. For example, like uh, components in automotive and also uh, uh, for the cutting tools. Uh, tungsten diamond like carbon uh, diamond like coating diamond like uh, carbon coating show high hardness addition to the substrate lower low friction and wear the problem is uh, uh, micro pitting uh, the problem uh, of the diamond like cutting diamond like coating is a uh, micro pitting uh, and then uh, laser micro saturing and uh, the diamond like coat carbon coating provide higher wear resistant than untextured diamond like carbon coating uh, and then uh, three biological testing so uh, Rebological testing uh, has been conducted uh, to get to analyze uh, the uh, characteristic of the uh, rebological properties of the diamond, uh, tungsten diamond -like coating uh, and also the steel ball itself. So uh, the steel ball and uh, diamond -like coating has been used uh, uh, to get the data for the uh, rebological properties uh, for the tungsten diamond -like coating. So uh, this is the testing parameter. Uh, the machine that has been used is uh, this one is uh, uh, Ducom TR282. Uh, this is the uh, three biological meter. Uh, meter. Uh, this one is used to uh, evaluate friction and wear characteristic of material under reprosecuting a slight motion. So uh, the testing load would be uh, 50 Newton, 25 Newton, uh, and also 35 Newton. The frequency would be 10 Hertz, and the temperature is uh, maintaining at 28 uh, to 30 degrees C. And then the period would be one hour uh, with three times repeatability. The ball uh, wear surface was measured by using an optical, uh, an optical uh, microscope and also uh, uh, by scanning, uh, by using scanning uh, electron microscope and energy dispersive aspe uh, spectrum spectroscopy, spectroscopy. Hmm. Uh, this is the coefficient of friction data uh, uh, that has been uh, that has been obtained uh, during the tribological testing. As you can see that uh, on the graph at the right hand side here, uh, this one is the uh, graph for 15 Newton, this uh, B is the graph for the 25 Newton and also C is the graph for 10, 35 Newton. Uh, so at, the, uh, at 15 Newton, uh, W15T, T is the abbreviative for the abbreviation for the uh, textured, textured, uh, textured uh, tungsten. So the W uh 15t coefficient friction value is 0 0.147 compared to w15 uh, which is 0 0.65 0 0.165 so and then at the at 25 newton newton uh w uh, 25t coefficient of friction value is 0 0.1495 compared to w25 uh, which is uh, 0 0.1665 and then at 35 newton uh, the, the the value for the uh, coefficient of friction for w35t is 
0.149 compared to W35 uh, which is 0 0.166. <clears throat> the result, the test result shows uh, that uh, the micro texture sample show lower coefficient of friction value compared to untextured cases in dry sliding condition. Uh, <clears throat> why we choose dry sliding condition because uh, to show that uh, uh, we don't want uh, any addition of complex mechanism uh, uh, instead of instead of our testing during our testing uh. so as you can see on the graph here uh, the friction trends uh, after 2500 second or equivalent to 41 minutes is smoother uh, for textured sample compared to untextured sample. This is because uh, this is because uh, uh, the capturing of wear debris by micro texture uh, which reduce the friction instability. Oh, doctor, sorry, I, I, I read your message. <laughs> sorry, doctor, I continue, I continue. I will continue, I will continue. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, this is the tribology wear and friction data. Uh, <clears throat> as you can see here, this is the graph of the ball wear uh, values for the textured and also untextured uh, uh, untested uh, uh, sample. So uh, at 15 Newton, uh, W15T scar diameter value is 3 to 1, 321.7 micrometer compared to W15, uh, which is uh, 6, uh, 600, uh, 618.7 uh, Newton meter. And at this is uh, this is the picture under optical uh, microscope uh, at 15 newton 15 newton as you can see here this one is a b is a textured uh, textured uh, textured uh, images uh, and then a is a uh, untextured images as you can see here the textured uh, have a have a, a diameter of the uh, scar is uh, lower compared to the uh, untextured uh, sample so at 25 Newton, uh, W25 T scar diameter value is 360.53 micrometer compared to W25, which is uh, 584, 94.3 uh, micrometer. At 35 uh, Newton, uh, W35 T scar diameter value is uh, 403.9 uh, micrometer compared to W35 T which is uh, 703.9 micrometer. Uh, the result shows that with the increased load, countable wear also increased. This is normal. However, the textured uh, tungsten diamond -like carbon has lower wear scar diameter compared to uh, untextured uh, diamond, uh, untextured tungsten diamond like carbon coating. Uh, so this uh, figure four, this one is a uh, is uh, images uh, optical images of the ball scar under optical uh, uh, microscope. All uh, all the textured uh, all the textured uh, sample having a smaller scar diameter compared to uh, untextured sample. So basically. Uh, this shows that uh, the coating have increased the wear property, tribology properties of uh, 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 of the sample itself. And <clears throat> so this figure three is uh, see, so figure three is the uh, images uh, of the uh, uh, wear track uh, for the textured and untextured uh, tungsten diamond like carbon under scanning uh, electron microscope SEM. 
so uh, uh, the conclusion from the as a result the for conclusion from the images are under uh, various load uh, uh, for SEM uh, SEM images is that W15 shows small localized crashes uh, as you can see here this is the W15 Sorry, this is your this is the uh, W15 uh, uh, e uh, images under SEM. Uh, SEM. Uh, W15 shows small localized crashes and the surface uh, W15T show wear induced smoldering polishing. This is the picture uh, images of uh, W15T as you can see here. Uh, we see uh, a polishing wear here. Uh, the sample sample W25 show a thick layer of coating material on the surface of wear track at some point. Uh, in case of the W25T, uh, the coating material can be seen to be trapped by dimples. Uh, here, you can see there, uh, this is the dimples. So the wear uh, debris is trapped by the dimples. Uh, the wear track of uh, W35 uh, in figure 5E and 5F show a uh, thick coating material layer at some point and wear induced smoldering uh, at other point. SEM image of W35T uh, in figure uh, 5G uh, shows that dimple trap uh, wear debris. Uh, however, SEM images of all the samples shows that it shows that the uh, deliminations or failure of coating did not occur in the case of textures, uh, textured uh, debris. So, and then this is the EDX uh, and uh, Raman spectroscopy uh, result. So, the result uh, from EDX. Uh, uh, at this, at the load of 15 Newton, W15 and WT show a reduction of uh, carbon value, carbon content, and increase in W and O content compared to deposit compared to as deposited sample. Uh, at 25 uh, Newton, W25 show higher, uh, higher uh, oxygen, higher oxygen content compared to W25 T. This uh, can be due to the presence of oxide-rich uh, film at the wear track. At load of 35 Newton, sample uh, W35 show higher oxygen content similar to W25 sample compared to uh, W35T. Uh, uh, this is because of the uh, uh, formation of tungsten uh, oxide debris. Uh, and also formation of the beneficial uh, tribolar layers, tribolar layers. So uh, for the result, uh, for Raman uh, spectroscopy result, uh, it, can, it can be seen that, it can be seen that before test, the tungsten dumbbell like carbon is having a value of uh, a value of in, uh, ratio of the intensity is uh, the 1.49 uh, uh, compared to uh, compared to uh, after test which is 2.94 uh, this one is the value of the uh, untested uh, WDSC after test 4.39 is the value for the untested untested uh, uh, sample So the result uh, indicates uh, that higher gravi uh, gravitic transformation in the case of untested, uh, untested uh, WDLC uh, compared to tested WLC at 35 Newton load uh, here. So uh, the conclusion uh, from uh, this uh, from the testing is that uh, at a load of 15 Newton sample W15T show lower coefficient uh, of friction compared to uh, W15. 
Uh, this can be uh, attributed to the entrapment of a microwave particle by micro texture. So the debris itself has been uh, entrapped uh, by the uh, uh, dimple uh, micro texture, uh, micro uh, micro texture. And for a fish, uh, ball counter ball uh, waste car reduced in the case of micro texture WDLC coating compared to counter balls which uh, rub against untested sample as we can see as we can see from the image uh, from the uh, uh, optical images that I showed uh, previously uh, the diameter scarf uh, for the tested diameter is smaller compared to untested diameter so that means uh, the uh, tested diameter uh, tested uh, uh, tested sample uh, with diamond light coating uh, has improved the wear and also uh, has improved the tribology properties of the petrol itself. And also lastly, the conclusion is a laser micro texturing can be used to enhance the tribological performance of uh, tungsten diamond light carbon uh, in automotive parts. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you for your presentation. If you can open your camera just for one minute. I have one question. Wait, hey, I don't know. Know. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Sorry, not yet. <laughs> Wait, sorry, Karunizam. sorry. Sorry, brother. Sorry. Uh, it seems that one Karunizam want to ask question very fast, doctor. <laughs> it's okay, let him ask. It is a healthy process. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Shabal Nizam, you are asking something? Uh, yes, Doctor. Uh, just a simple question. Um, rather, than, rather than we use the diamond light carbon, is there any material that we can implement for these uh, techniques? <clears throat> There is a several. Uh, there is a several uh, coating that has been used uh, before. For example, like uh, it shows in. Uh, for example, like uh, uh, carbon carbide coating, uh, carbide coating, uh, and uh, and uh, silicon dot diamond light coating uh, and theta hydral uh, uh, amorphous uh, carbon coating. There are several coatings that, that, that has been used, but uh, this article mainly focusing on uh, tungsten diamond light carbon because there is no uh, there is no data for the uh, tungsten uh, dope diamond light carbon before. So the 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 the, the, the articles uh, focusing on ta, uh, tungsten diamond light carbon uh, specifically on uh, in automotive parts. Okay, answer. Your question, answer, Mr. Nizam. Cannot, cannot hear you. Your mic is off. Sorry. Uh, instead of using the DLC, uh, is for I give for example, we use the molybdenum uh, disulfide. Uh, can you uh, give me one uh, one uh, component that we use for molybdenum disulfide? Thank you. <laughs> Doctor, uh, I am sorry, uh, Mr. Wan Karunizam, because my uh, case study is uh, tungsten diamond light carbon, so I would say that uh, I will search. Uh, I will search for the. Uh, for your uh, for the for the question that you asked, but uh, at the moment I cannot answer your question because I I also don't know because my focus is towards uh, tungsten diamond light carbon. Okay, okay, Mr. Adam, thank you, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Okay, doctor, I have one question, doctor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I have one question actually. Uh, my palm oil factory is a heavy industry so basically we have a lot of uh, uh, scraper conveyor scraper conveyor uh, scraper conveyor uh, to transfer the palm uh, the fresh fruit bunch itself toward uh, an, another machines so basically 
as, you, as, as we know that uh, the palm uh, fresh fruit bunch FFB uh, that has been uh, harvested uh, that has been harvested in the field in the uh, palm oil field uh, the, the uh, uh, some sometimes the fruit itself is dirty so a lot of uh, so a lot of sand a lot of sand a lot of debris and uh, my scraper conveyor uh, we use uh, previously we use uh, my steel my steel uh, flat bar uh, 9 mm uh, as a liner we say as a liner and then uh, we change to uh, apex diamond uh, I, I believe that I expect that Apex Diamond Liner is using a diamond coating, but somehow uh, the performance of the Apex Diamond is not uh, is not I would say that it's not uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not obviously increase the lifespan of the liner itself. So, what is your comment, Doctor, about this? Because uh, I would say that the my from my experience. Uh, uh, the diamond itself, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, have any enhancement in terms of the lifespan uh, when it comes to the contact with uh, sand. Yeah, correct. So what you are talking about is uh, abrasive wear, or uh, there is some abrasive erosive wear uh, also, uh, which can be seen because you have got a, another medium which is sand. Uh, the paper which you are talking about is a very close condition paper in which we control the environment and we use only lubricant or dry sliding wear in the in atmosphere or in some humid conditions. There is no sand involved, there is no slurry involved, there is no any other medium involved. So diamond-like coatings are only good in surfaces which are in close contact or close environment such as in automotive sliding components such as cams, okay, rocker arms, uh, you know, piston, cylinder liner, something like that. However, the condition in which you're talking about is that you have got a plate in which you need to, you have to replace it because it acts as a liner. It means that this plate is a sacrificing or it is a sacrificial, sacrificial uh, liner. So in some cases, what you want is uh, you want something hard and resistive rather than uh, decreasing the friction because uh, it is it is very difficult for you to decrease friction with already because sand is also getting inside so the, those sand will cause pitting and you know those pittings will dig the material furthermore and then they will it will result in more amount of wear and uh, severe wear so in in cases where you have got a lot of hard material and then there is this is this is a case of multiple uh, where, where multiple wear modes which are acting concurrently, erosion is occurring also, abrasion is occurring also, and the environment is quite severe. So in such cases, diamond-like coating will not work because diamond-like coating's objective is to be in a controlled environment under the influence of lubricant or dry sliding, doesn't matter. In controlled environment, without the influence of sand or without the influence of any other thing, it has, it should be very clean and it will work only when the contacts are very clean. Then only it will help reduce the friction. Otherwise it will fail also. Even other coatings which are very, very thin such as chromium nitride, nickel, uh, nickel chromium nitride, uh, titanium chromium nitride, all of them will fail because their thickness is very small. What you're using is eight millimeter uh, thick plate, right? Mm. It's eight mm. But the coating is only one thousand microns or 500 microns or even 3 point, even less 3 microns, the one which presented by the previous presenters. So that 3 micron cannot uh, withstand the impact load of uh, the erosive things which you are putting. So the conditions are very, very different. So diamond like will not work, I think. I understand, Doctor. And also, I also, uh, I also tried uh, nitride, nitride, nitride coating. Uh, okay. For my machine, uh, my for my machine uh, one of the machine machine is uh, the machine is hydrocyclone, uh, but then uh, the performance is is not is not is not that good compared to the uh, nitrate uh, itself. Cyclone uh, removes the dust. The function of cyclone is to remove the, uh, the to 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 uh, to separate uh, the kernel, uh, the heavy material, and also. Uh, the uh, like the material which is shell uh, shell uh, which is a biomass product uh, the biomass product itself so basically i i use if 
the nitrile 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 coating but then the the last pen is uh, i would say that it's quite the same with nitrile itself uh, the nitrile uh, cone itself it's about six months only uh, there is no enhancement inside there, there is no enhancement in uh, in terms of the last pen and then for the <coughs> the liner uh, uh then i choose uh, i i choose uh, i i use uh, after uh, the unsuccessful uh, usage of the ipex diamonds liner then i i uh, replace the liner with a medium uh, carbon steel and also high carbon steel so the medium carbon steel is used at the the curves the curve uh, pattern and uh, the high the high carbon steel uh, used at the straight pattern uh, the straight uh, conveyors so that one uh, because uh, if uh, the high carbon content is having a high tensile strength high abrasive uh, wear and friction so uh, i can ex i can i can enhance uh, my lifespan of the liners uh, for another uh, two from six months to two years sir. Very, very good. because yeah. uh, high carbon steel has high hardness so yes. hardness is more related to wear resistance correct yes 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 yeah. sir. You can uh, do tungsten carbide or tungsten cobalt carbide WCCCO uh, coating, uh, and that one is also not coating. You use welding sticks, and then you uh, do the what you call rebuilding, rebuilding of the hard blades. Hard facing. Some people, hard facing. Yeah, hard facing. Some people do yes. that hard facing also. So that could be useful, but then it might be very costly also because uh, those sticks are not very. Hard facing. Uh, there are several conditions that we can use, but some sometimes uh, hard facing is not good because we, I would say that we uh, we 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 once once we hard facing our 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 for example our flat bar or our plate, uh, it would break. It would break easily. Brittle, it would break brittle, easily. Brittle. Yes, uh, it would break easily. The macro structure already changed. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. I was in cement industry and they used to do hard facing of. Uh, uh, rollers, some of the very very big rollers, they will do hard facing, mm. and they used to do hard facing of crusher jaws. You know the crusher equipment. Oh, so, crusher! Yes, I have crusher here also. <laughs> so they will do the hard facing for the jaws, for the hammers, hammers of the crusher also. Yeah. So yeah, follow the industrial standard. These coatings are still in infancy stage, and I think they are only implemented uh, for cutting tools only. For yeah. uh, you know, for your case, it's uh, very heavy in the industries, and I think laser cladding or laser, uh, you know, plasma coatings might be better. Thermal spray, thermal spray coatings and plasma coatings might be better. Physical paper yeah. deposition is no good for you, actually. There are suppliers. Uh, there are some suppliers uh, would like that they, they, they introduce coating uh, for yeah. some of the parts uh, for machines inside of farm or factory. But somehow, I would say that. Uh, uh most of the uh, most of the trial is not successful i would say because the last pen is not uh, the enhancement of the last pen is not that much uh, the difference uh, it's actually uh, it's not that much have you heard about metco 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 company metco metco never heard doctor okay, okay. so yeah some some of the yeah, it should be researched first. The coating should be researched first, and then only it should be applied. But when it comes to what, in, when it comes to sand, <laughs> when it comes to sand, you know, uh, yeah, 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 that's a big, big issue actually. Even bearings failure, gearbox fail, so many failure, the maintenance failures. Uh, yes, yes, that's that. That is Thank why I left the industry. <laughs> Let's see my industry has very high silo. Uh, silo, silo, so many rollers. So know. and then so big big moto, same like here, like big big moto, and then quite dusty, like, I would say. Yeah, very good. Uh, die very fast. Yeah. So I guess uh, I have no questions because uh, you already have had discussion with me. So thank you very much for your presentation. If you guys all can open your webcam so that we can take a group picture as the last class picture. And doctor, uh, even after 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 this semester, uh, can we? I mean, like, uh, can if I have any question, can I personally sure, privately sure. Uh, message to you because you know I would like to get a, a, a more knowledge from you, doctor, to be. Uh, like, to, uh, I, I, I have less less knowledge than you guys, but. I can just give you some uh, 
surface knowledge solution. But at least I can I can give you some options here. Yeah. Because I would say that I I'm quite interested in uh, material. I'm quite interested in material. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Your because if your, your thesis should be in this in this uh, you know what is your thesis? So, thesis. Sorry, doctor. This is my first time, doctor. First semester. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I I would recommend that you take this uh, topic, uh, surface engineering, as your thesis, and use the data which you have already collected in industry. Use that data and put that in thesis actually, mm -hmm. so that it is a practical industrial thesis, industrial uh, practical thesis uh, that we can use. So that would at, be very nice. At least I can, I can, I mean, like I can, I can try at my my factory because my factory lose uh, use a lot of uh, liner, uh, hydrocyclone, uh, centrifugal, centrifugal force. So yes, yes. I would say that probably I, if I I find uh, more yeah, yeah. more. Yeah, you can document this thing that previously you bought nine mm sheet of steel. Then after two years, the thickness of the sheet reduced to let's say six mm. So the wear scar or the wear wear uh, wear depth decreased from nine to six. Then you recently changed it with diamond uh, base sheet. Then you can show that the wear rate has increased. This is for the roller. So you can document this in the form of pictures and. In the form of measurements, and you can present this data. I think it should be good enough also. So even if the supervisors in UMP do not propose uh, the thesis which you like, you propose to them that okay, doctor, I want to work in this field. So please uh, take this title as uh, what I want. Maybe. So you guys, all of you guys, can propose your industrial titles as well, rather than following. Uh, the titles of uh, UMP lecturers also. It is up to you also. No problem. I understand, Doctor. One Karun Nazam has uh, no, uh, uh, enough, enough camera. He used two camera instead of one. He is a, he is a, you know, what do you call streamer. streamer. <laughs> yes, uh, very nice. Uh, let me take the picture. Okay. Uh, one person is really okay, guys. So, thank you very much for being with Thank me. you very much, doctor. Thank you, and uh, hopefully, uh, I'll see you in the next or uh, upcoming semesters. And good luck. Hopefully, we can, can go, we can get full mark. Correct, correct. Okay, thank you, doctor. Okay. Help us, doctor. Uh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> thank you, doctor. Bye. Good night.